Crumpet Nitro. So your hyper 21 is low on compression. Well, it's low in pinch, isn't it? The compression doesn't really change. And when it's low on pinch, then you lose your compression because the air slides down the side between the piston and the sleeve. So we're going to get this repinched. First thing we've got to do is lift the sleeve up while we've still got the flywheel attached. So what we'll do is we'll block the exhaust port from the inside using a couple little pieces of zip tie and we'll see if we can raise the sleeve a little bit. So what I do is I rotate the flywheel until I've just got a little bit of the exhaust port exposed and then I'll rotate it see what happens okay there you go boom sleeve came out so that's just using one bit of zip tie on the inside now if that didn't work look how many ports you've got you've got four ports in a hyper 21 3 port because you've got three inlet ports and an exhaust port so what you can do is utilize those ports to your advantage put some zip tie in two ports put it in three put it in all four you know put it in all four like that make a crisscross and then it's even pressure and you've got more lever action all right well that's not it still got to take the sleeve out take the sleeve out and now we've got the piston jiggling around in there what you do is you bring your engine to top dead center and when it's there you just flick it off you just pull the connecting rod off the crankshaft and that's it it falls out send that away to get repinched and then we'll put it all back together we just got our pistons and sleeves back after being repinched uh, so we've got the 3.3 has been repinched and we can feel that it doesn't want to move anymore that's good we got the, uh, what's this? This is the HPI G3.0 Nitro Star. Also doesn't want to move, that's good. And we got the Hyper 21 3 port. Yeah, they're very tight again. So I found out a collet was used, which means it's pressed evenly from all directions, and then the cap is screwed on, which brings in all pieces of the collet. So it's not a two-piece press you might see on youtube a two-piece press does the pinching from both sides and you end up with an egg shape it gets turned into an oval instead of a circle whereas when you use a er collet you're getting even pressure from all sides at the same time to get a very round result okay so never had a repinched sleeve before this is my first time so let's put these sleeves back in the engines and uh, we'll do some tests we got the piston and sleeve back for the hyper 21 been repinched so they put our ER collet around the sleeve which comes from all angles at the same time because it's screwed on from the top so well, this had no pinch at all, now it's come back and it's got a lot of resistance. So that should start up and run good again. 
and also we've got the 3.3 back as well and again you can really feel the pinch as it gets towards the top of the stroke and one other thing that I found interesting if you look at the 21 and the 3.3 the 21 is much skinnier than the 3.3 even though it's a much larger engine see Look at that, the 3.3 has got a bigger bore. Okay. Next thing we want to do is heat up with the hairdryer the block so that'll be easy to get the sleeve back in. Okay, we'll just test how we'll just test it and we'll see how hard it is. So we want the hole facing forward and the cutout of the skirt facing forward. Okay, well the heat does make it a lot easier, doesn't it? The bottom. That's in the bottom. Put our head gasket. Then put our head button with the spherical, semi-spherical cutout facing down. That's the top of the burn room. Okay. You can put the head on now. Any particular way. Yes, you want the Hyper 21 three port legible facing the front. So we put it over the mid and then what we'll do is we'll put snap on the throttle linkage and then it can go like that because it's got nowhere to go. Alright, first start of the Hyper 21 3 port since we've got it repinched. Can I have a glow igniter please? The blue one? Thank you. Okay. So I think we are, can I have the screwdriver please? Oh. Uh, this one's a little one. Oh. Thank you. So I think we might be too lean. I think that's why I'm having trouble starting. Might be too lean. Because remember, the factory settings that Hobeo give you are for Taiwan, which is very hot and humid. So we might have to go richer because we're a little bit cooler here down south. been too lean. Rich in the high, rich in the low. Okay, let's try again.
It was just a little bit too lean, that's all. In the last video, um, some people said, well, did you destroy your chassis? Did you drill holes in it? Uh, no, you can see here quite clearly that the chassis has got no holes in it. The two holes that I drilled to stop the engine mount sliding only went through the um engine mount plate which is a u-shaped plate that goes around the engine like that so that's where the two holes are you can see the hole and you can see my m3 bolts not really poking through but they're in there okay so definitely no damage to the chassis now the last time we started this hyper 7 tq with the uh Hyper 21 3 port that has been repinched. Uh, the revs just went really high, tried to run away on me, and uh, richening didn't help. So it was good that it started up. I uh, wasn't sure uh, how, how it would go after the repinch. Uh, it was a bit lean, that's what was giving me the trouble. But then it, when I richened it, it eventually started. And uh, But then the revs just increased too much. So I've decided that there is definitely an air leak and what I'm going to have to do is just seal all the known uh, problem points for air leaks. So that means check that the head is on properly, um, check the gasket for the exhaust, check the o-ring in the back plate, maybe add some sealant there, check the carb neck and the pinch bolt and check all the other o-rings in the carb so we'll do a full strip and uh, we'll get the silicon out and we'll seal her right up the only other thing to check is uh, for air leaks is the o-ring in the fuel tank which i'm pretty sure i've already put a new one in because it's black and it looks brand new and uh, the gasket for the glow plug needs to have a good seal as well you don't want that to be worn out and causing an air leak. So I've pulled most of this engine apart, taken off the carb, taken off the button, had a look, trying to work out why we've got this air leak. Two things I immediately noticed, the back plate screws were not very tight and the head screws were not very tight. All right, that could explain the air leak. Maybe we don't need to change any O-rings or put any sealer on there. But then I started having a look at these shims on the head and check this out. Look at that. The shim has crumbled. It's only a C shim. It's not even a full complete shim. Not only that, but it's, uh, it's crumbling. You saw it just bend then. This is terrible. This has got to go in the bin. All right. So... Now that we've worked out that the Hyper 7 had some air leaks because of a faulty gasket and loose screws on the back plate and loose screws on the head, uh, we're going to put it all back together, but we're not going to take any chances. While we're here, we're going to whack on a little bit of silicon uh, from the tube and uh, that way we make sure 100% that we've got no air leaks. All right, now that we've got the head on nice and tight with Loctite, I'm um, using blue Loctite, uh, we're gonna do the back plate next. And uh, we're gonna put just a tiny little bit of silicon on there as well. Uh, let's move our engine close to top dead center. 
so we can put in the turbo fan which is also our one-way bearing and it's got the little starter shaft in there as well well that's not really called the start shaft is it it's the uh, I guess it's the pin I reckon we avoid the round section I reckon we just put it on the back just very thin as thin as possible even maybe using a razor blade would be better than a screwdriver so we can get it even thinner anyway you get the idea we're putting a thin layer of silicon on there just to make that airtight seal even tighter the o-ring's going to do the majority of the work anyway okay let's put that on do it up time to do up our back plate so we'll get the little screws put a little bit of loctite on there and then let's do them up all right when we do up the screws we'll do them up in a crisscross pattern so one two and then either one yeah there's a couple of reasons you do that uh, crisscross will make you jump and uh, so you get even pressure so how tight am I going until my hand is slipping on the driver my hand is absolutely slipping I've got no grip at all that's how you know it's done tight all right now that we've got the back plate back on um, I think we'll do the carb next now for the carb on the hyper 7 on the hyper 21 engine it's using a two-piece pinch bolt so you can see the two pieces come in and go together and they've got a, a nice round taper for the for the carburetor and some o-rings on the end so the o-ring is going to make the seal stop the air leaking so we're not going to trust these o-rings we're going to assume that we've got an air leak there as well and what we're going to do is once we put our our carb in so we've got we've got the hole here okay so the pinch bolts come in from either side and then the screw grabs the furthest pinch bolt and brings the two pinch bolts together and that clamps the carb that's going to clamp it all right so even though there's an o-ring there we're not going to trust that that's going to be 100 percent so what we're going to do is we're going to put some silicon all around here okay that's one thing we're going to do The other thing we can do is we can put some silicon where these two pinch bolts meet so we might as well do that first so the two pinch bolts come in like that okay one and two so we're going to line them up okay so we're going to push them out a bit line them up a bit all right so now that they're separated that means the carb 
it's going to go in nice and easily. So while it's in that position, we're going to put a bit of silicon in there, all around this area. And notice I'm scooping it away from the engine. Scoop it away. Okay. And the other thing we're going to do is get some silicon. And we're just going to wrap it around the base. Yeah, it's a bit messy. Yeah, it'll make it a little bit harder to come off. But not that much. The silicon, once it's dry, you can peel it off with your finger. Okay, so I'm just putting a real thin amount, and you can see that this silicon's already got a little bit of a hard ball forming there, so I've removed that. Alright, that's done. So now that's ready to go in. Uh, you can see the high speed needle, I forgot to put that in. And the mid speed needle, I've got it just a little bit on the rich side. It's supposed to be flush, it's just sticking out a little bit. I'll just fix that up. A little bit more flush now. All right, so that goes in straight down. See how you can still twist it because there's nothing grabbing it yet. So what we'll do is we'll get the screw now, the M3 bolt, countersunk, put it through this side, hopefully it grabs. Okay, so it's just pushed, it's pushed the, uh, the threaded end of the pinch bolt out. So we'll just push it back in. Oh yeah, it's grabbed. It's dragging it in. So just before we tighten it up, we'll just check our alignment. Okay, so I want... I want this about there. Now I can tighten it up. Okay, so I'm not doing it as hard as I can, but I am doing it firm. Alright, so all that's left is the high speed needle and the pull start. Alright, Hyper 7 3 port with the repinch is ready for a test. We've got the uh, radio, let's put a life battery in there. And uh, we've got a spare receiver here. So uh, let's plug in these servos, connect up uh, a life battery to this one, and uh, heat up the engine and give it a test. Radio is on. We just need to attach some wires now because uh, we've already bound this receiver. Radio on. On. Hyper 7. Car on.
Looking good. Let's put some 30% fuel in and see if this thing even starts up. All right, Nitro gang, huge dramas. Uh, pull start uh, was not successful, bit of a blister on the finger. So I tried with the bump box and uh, the issue has become apparent now that we're using the bump box. We've got fuel absolutely dripping everywhere here. All around here, fuel, 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 fuel. Looks like we've got some kind of massive um, air leak, maybe a gasket issue, maybe uh, something's not tightened down all the way. Let's get the hex driver out, find out what's going on here. All right, so we've got fuel all over this surface here. And we've also got fuel all over the, the bottom of the cooling head. So that can only mean one thing. That means we've got a leak from the top of the sleeve and the piston and the head where it all meets the button, the integrated button that's integrated into the head. So what we can do is just have a real close look at this. So if we can figure it out, otherwise we might have to seal it another way. Right, turns out this button is not integrated. It's a two-piece normal button. You want me to take the Lego apart for you? Yeah. Okay, I'm coming now. All right, so now that we know that it's a two-piece design, we can have a really close look at it and see if there's something wrong with it, see if it's dirty. Maybe it just needs a bit of attention with a pin and, uh, and clean it up. Maybe there's some dirt. Actually, I can see some dirt there. Yeah, let's give this a really good clean, maybe even rotate it a little bit. It should be fine once we clean it up. All right, a quick look at the manual has revealed that there should be exactly two shims on this button. There should be a 0.3 millimeter aloe shim and a 0.1 millimeter brass shim. I haven't got any shims at all here. None here, none here. So let's go through the spare parts box and see if I can find some shims. Lucky for me, I've got a spare three port here. So let's crack this one open and see if we've got the, uh, the gaskets that we need to find. All right, so straight away, we can tell from the color that we've got the brass gaskets here. Okay, nothing on this side, but we can see them on this side. So let's pinch them from this engine and make the seal complete. There was only one, and I'm assuming that this is the 0.1 millimeter gasket. Definitely doesn't feel like a 0.3 millimeter uh, alu gasket. So we'll just try it with this one and see if that is all we need. Otherwise, I might have to whip the silicon out. Don't think I've got anything else. Just been using the high speed rotary tool to give uh, this cooling head a bit of a clean, just in case I've missed something and uh, did the same with the button. Now that I've put the gasket on, just wiping it all down, make sure there's no dirt, because any little bit of dirt could be causing an air leak, and uh, we want this stuff pretty clean. All back together. Um, let's slowly lower it back on, and uh, we'll be ready to do a test up. Moment of truth, now it's night time, so uh, I've got to be really careful, probably just start it up in the garage, and if it starts, we'll just shut it off straight away. breathe so uh there's no way i'm going to keep going with this we'll we'll continue another day all right so we've opened up a uh hyper 21 8 port and we've pinched the 0.3 millimeter alu, alu shim so it's uh dimension 16 by 23 and uh 0.3 thick so let's find out once and for all what is going on here you can see once we remove the head and then the button, we can see here that we've only got the copper shim, not the alu shim. So let's add in the alu shim that it needs. Hopefully it'll run great then.
Game over. Oh, we don't say that. Out of fuel. <laughs>